Wait, does anyone know how to flip the video so it's not backwards? Oh. Afterward, I think you can. Oh, no. Okay, if anyone knows how to do that, we'll do that after. Yeah. I don't know. I can like No, you can do it. I know you can do it. You can, I think it's afterward. Tuesday, January 17th. Crew and Skipper Talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I want everyone to kind of like realize when you're going into crewing, if you're new to crewing, is sail with as many people as possible because you learn something new from every different skipper that you sail with. So like when I was a freshman, I sailed with a whole bunch of people, and like you pick up certain things, like little tricks, like little easier ways of doing things. Like David does this thing when he jives with the jib where he'll like trim it in a little bit for me, and then when it jives, it makes it a lot easier, and I like take that, I took that freshman year, and I still like showed Matt and Matt, now we do it all the time. So it's just picking up little things and adapting to different skippers makes you like that much better as a crew. Um, okay, so start. Who knows like, like the obvious things to do if you're a crew and you're on a start, like to start naming off things. In the Look starting sequence, boats. what should you be doing? Look what? for other boats. Eyes on other boats. What else? Um, How do they keep time? Watch. <laughs> <laughs> Some skippers like hear it every 30, some like hear it every 10 after a minute. Right, but that's the thing. That's like a sailing with every other skipper. Like you learn like, okay, how often do people like to hear it? Um, just take special note of your speed. Like when you start getting to the line, you might have yep. to lock. And then right when it's time to go, you know, trim in and hit the side. Yep, exactly. So just being aware of like boats around you, being aware of your boat speed, you know, being aware of time, making sure you're relaying any information you think that your skipper doesn't have, or even if you just relaying any information you get to your skipper will be helpful to them. Like they're paying attention to different things that you're paying attention to. So I have all communication between skipper and crew is solid. Um, the biggest thing, okay, so when you're on the line, when you're on the line and you're stacked up with a bunch of different boats, what should you be thinking about? It's like 10 seconds to start. Am I over early? That's the first thing. If you're not over early, the gun starts to count five, four, three, two, one. What should you be doing? Does anyone know? Your uh, weight placement. Yep, and like making sure you get that roll off the line. So like you'll start to notice when you go to like higher regattas, like everyone does this. Like it's a it's a roll off the line. You like hit the low side, hit the high side, make it back in the middle, and it's like it gives like this extra oomph off the line. And literally everyone does it and it shoots you off. So another important thing regarding a roll is like when you especially for me, I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but I get like really excited about it and then like I trim in really fast. That's really, really bad. You don't want to trim in all the way right off the line because when you trim in all the way off the line, your bow just goes So you have to like make sure you trim in most of the way and then you trim in the rest of the way with the main when you're going upwind. Okay, does anyone have any questions about starts? No, okay. So then the upwind. So the first like 45 seconds of the race, are the most important because that's where things, if you had a horrible start, if you're trying to like make things up, if you were over early, you're rounding. So this is all very important. This all happens within the first 45 seconds of your race, right? So what should you be thinking about? Right? Okay, you're off the line. Matt always tells me, okay, we're in race mode. What does that mean? What should you be thinking about? How do you shift gears from like you're sitting, you're waiting, you're starting, you're luffing on the line, you're looking at other boats, now you're fully hiked, you're trimmed, what should you be like thinking about? What should you be looking at? Wind up the course. Wind up the course. Mm, your speed compared to the boats. Good. And the other boats. And the other boats, where everyone else is, paying attention, making sure you weren't called over early. Sometimes that happens. Um, okay, so in 420s, like it's especially important what's called windward cheating. Or some people call it like barber hauling. I didn't know that, that was one of them before. I thought Matt was like talking about Sammy. He was like calling for barber. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that means when you're going up wind, you want to have your so 420s are really like finicky, like as far as like sail trim. They're like really annoying. So you want to have your sail trimmed to like its ideal trim. So you're trimmed in, you're hiked out most likely, and then you ease your trim inch and a half and then with your opposite sheet the lazy sheet you trim it back in to give the sail more curve okay inch and a half and then any questions about that okay so mark roundings this is kind of the whole thing 
for it. Same thing at the starts, make sure you don't, that's the word mark I think I guess, don't trim in too fast, trim in most of the way, trim with the mane, makes it more smooth. Oh, also upwind, ducking other boats. So what happens when you see like another boat, you're yelling starboard or they're yelling starboard, what do you, and you end up having to duck them? What should you do? Make sure you trim around as, you, as you're ducking, make sure that you keep your sails. Okay, but how do you duck? It's first, right? So make sure every action you do, especially with the ducking, you do with your mane. So be paying attention, like you ease the mane and the jib together, and then when you're coming back up, I always like listen for Matt's mane sheet to come in, like you can hear the clicking. Make sure you're trimming at the exact same type of speed because like you do it right, you get like a big like push off of that like joint trimming and coming up wind. So that's always something to like, be aware of, like ducking together or easing together and then trimming back in together. And be aware, very aware of your body body weight, because a lot of times, obviously, when you ease, you like come back in for a second and then come back up, and then you trim it. Okay, downwind. What are like the first three things you do when you, okay, you round the mark, now what? Send the 